Ladies and gentlemen, we've got one of the most exciting videos yet, all about the very best piston-driven rifle. I'm ready to go for the MR556. So close, you're so close. This has got a buffer tube, not what I'm looking for. Got you, side folding, here we go. I mean, that's really cool too, but that's long stroke. Nice. I'm here to talk about the absolute best short stroke piston driven side folding rifle. Let's do this. I'm a mag dump them all. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms. We've got Aaron back with us. How you guys doing? And we've got Jason with us. What's going on folks? And we've also got a bunch of short stroke piston driven rifles in front of us as well. And just like what we talked about in the intro, we want to do a comparison of all these short stroke boys with folding stocks. We didn't want to go with something that had the buffer tube and all that type of fun stuff, which, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh -huh. I like a lot of these rifles, you know, um, uh, LMT's got a couple of those, obviously the HKMR556. There's, there's a couple of good ones out there, but for, you know, today's video, we wanted to go with something with the side folding stocks and get a feel for these ergonomics and, well, which one that we have in front of us that might be the best. So, you know, we can go ahead and hop into this, but I feel like some feelings are gonna get hurt. I can go ahead and throw that out there. And with that, let's just, before we even get started, how do you think today's gonna go? We're gonna hurt a lot of feelings. Too bad they don't make band-aids for them. So, it's all good though. Fair enough. <laughs> so me personally, I'm gonna let you guys lead the way on this one, because I don't have a ton of knowledge. I know there's probably some listeners out there also, and I want you guys to teach me what exactly is going on here, right. reference a lot of these models. I'm gonna go with the SIG, just because I'm a SIG guy, I'm gonna be that guy, but, We'll see what happens. <laughs> just right off the bat, just going from Spear LT. Yeah, Spear. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Now, I'm, I don't think Jason and I are gonna claim that we know everything about what's happening, but ultimately what we wanna do is get a feel for all of these rifles. And let's go ahead and just start off really quick and talk a little bit about these. We've got the ACR, the FN SCAR 16. We've got the CZ Bryn 2, also the BNT APC 223, the SIG Spear LT, the IWI Carmel, and there's also the Beretta ARX 100, which we don't have here because but there's also something new that Beretta has come out with called the um, NARP. The uh, NARP. Yeah, that is the um, okay. uh, new assault rifle platform from, from Beretta. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes one day anyway. Yeah. So there it is. <laughs> Oldest to newest. We think we got it right pretty much here. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about what you guys think might happen mm -hmm. here in just a little bit. Some feelings might get hurt. You're already going to be in love with the Six Spear LT. I'll be that guy. You'll be that guy. Let's go ahead and start with the ACR. Let's go run a couple of uh, mags through it for each of us. Yeah. Get a feel for it and then move on to the SCAR. Let's do this. Let me see that. <laughs> winner, winner, longhorn dinner. Stay there. No, it's a little short. So the ACR, it's, a, it's an older rifle. I mean, I think this ultimately was designed in 2010. Remington made ultimately the law enforcement military full auto version and then Bushmaster made the civilian model, which, you know, it had a lot of potential. A lot of potential. We're talking about uh, quick changes for different calibers and different chambering, but they made it in some weird calibers that nobody really wanted. And on top of that, the price point wasn't exactly what Magpul mentioned either. And it really, you haven't seen too many since about 2020. However, as of this year, Franklin Armory 
well, they bought Bushmaster and they have kind of hinted about bringing us the ACR, which I think would be really cool. What are y'all's thoughts on the ACR? What you thought of? Oh man, adaptive combat rifle, right? Came out with a great idea. Concept was there. I just think it may have been hit before its prime. Um, other than that, out of the box, it comes with everything that you need. QD points right out the box. Most of these guns don't have that nowadays. Adjustable gas system, like you mentioned, quick change barrels and calibers that nobody ever really asked for, but here nor there, I think it's solid. I think it might need a comeback. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. I actually kind of agree with what everything Jason just said with that uh, shooting wise, it was, I felt smooth shooting with that. It, it does feel really good to shoot. I, I like the ACR quite a bit. And you know, we'll talk a little bit more about the other rifles, but let's go ahead and talk about something really quick. If you're running some of these piston driven rifles, notice where the charging handle is. In this case, with the EOTech, it is ambidextrous, which is nice. But one thing I noticed is if I'm gonna go ahead and charge this, none of the optics that we throw on here you get in the way no. what, from from my experience at least you know whether i'm throwing a magnifier on there or a different type of optic or whatever which is a nice thing mm -hmm. absolutely not a knuckle buster so that's a plus yeah. yep speaking of knuckle yeah. buster let's go and grab that scar 16. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. It's a little warm. <laughs> Water's just fine. Love it. She's warm. All right, hold up. Load it up. The effing scar. What'd you guys think? I'm spicy. Fan. Spicy? Spicy for sure. Got a little hot, Definitely. but it's all good. Um, other than that, it's, it's solid, man. So if I were to compare this to the ACR, it probably just comes down to the muzzle device. I will say the break on this, for me, I recognize that this was a this was an easy gun to, yes. to shoot. Uh, the trigger feels good. The ergonomics are good. I am not a fan of the A2 grip, uh, which, Again, this is this isn't a cheap rifle, uh, but for whatever reason they just keep the, the A2 grip. I, why? Uh, but I can say when I mentioned earlier too about like uh, oh getting the scrapes on like that, this one with the new non-reciprocating charging handles, which are great because initially every time you pulled the trigger on this gun, you pretty much get that. But with the newer models as of what this year this past past year i believe it was yeah. the non-reciprocating charging handle is great because what now happens is you can hold the gun here if you want you can put your thumb wherever you want it to go and this isn't going to come back and hit you like it used to now it no longer reciprocates which is great and it is actually ambidextrous and you don't actually have to like move the charging handle they also put the charging handle at an angle which is nice because now you don't have to worry about scraping your hands as much because that's something i've uh, gotten a lot of bloody knuckles from Absolutely. because i've especially with the eotex mm -hmm. i've done it so many times with this uh how about for you when you shot it man i liked it man it was it actually felt lighter and I've, my follow-up shots were faster as you can see i started picking yeah. up the pace a whole lot more on that um i like this one a whole lot better well i can't say a whole lot better because i enjoyed the first one also but definitely would uh, say this is an upgrade to what we shot last yep and i uh the other little thing that i'm a little picky about is the rail uh you got a again to be legal 16 inch barrel out here not a lot of rail space uh thankfully there's uh what kinetic development group yep. that 
offers a lot of different aftermarket parts that are even m lock that actually extend this a little bit more so you can have a little bit more room out there also get a little bit more of an extension going that i do like other than that though the scar works it's great it's very popular a lot of you guys like it quite a bit but is it my favorite? I don't know, we got a couple more rifles we gotta shoot before I can admit which one's my favorite. Certified classic. It's, it is classic. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Ooh, this Bren 2 is gonna be money. What happened right there? Uh, I need to put this away for ATF reasons. <laughs> um, what <laughs> <does> she say? <laughs> hey, grab that. I was going to say, that, uh, that was quick. <laughs> uh, it looked like you had some fun with that one. Enjoy. Very much so. Alright. CZ boy. Right. Off to a good start. Okay. Function. Mm. So far, it's my favorite. <laughs> I fully piggyback on that one. So yeah, I third that 100%. Yeah, the CZ, uh, the CZ Bren too. They just, they just did a, a damn good job. Yeah. Uh, all right, what can I say? So first of all, accuracy, yeah, it's it's there. The trigger is amazing. I uh, definitely second that. <laughs> yeah, so we can go ahead and uh, show that off really quick. You'll notice that we've got just a little bit, a little bit of a, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, <laughs> a little bit of travel reset, yeah, you a little bit of travel, sure. not bad, but that is lightweight. Uh, the gun itself is also lightweight, and I, I don't know, I, again, uh, if I were to compare it to like the SCAR, uh, first of all, I think the price point's better. Secondly, on top of that, you got a little bit longer rail space, which is nice. And this is adjustable, yeah? yeah, yeah. Adjustable system. So if you want to shoot it suppressed, uh, you can do that, unlike, well, I mean, you can shoot the scar suppressed, but there's also this- uh, <coughs> Void warranty. Void <coughs> warranty, yeah, if you suppress. You anyway, you sad day. <laughs> so I gotta say, I'm pretty imp impressed with that, you know, and yeah yeah so i think i think we all are <laughs> uh, i'm gonna have to definitely agree with clint it first of all it's just an easier gun to shoot it's not bouncy to me like the scar it feels better in hand it feels better equipped it, it does get a little warm on the hand guard but we just send some rounds down range so that's understandable but all in all the craftsmanship in here to me money but i mean I, you guys kind of covered everything at this point um just everything about it felt great shooting it. And yeah. like you said, we were able to pick up some speed on this one and yeah. felt amazing on the follow-up shots and transitioning back and forth was definitely a good feel here. Right, so. and the muzzle device, the brake that they have on it also made this gun very easy to stay on target very as well. Oh, yeah. And again, that in conjunction with the trigger, I mean, it's just, it's oh, yeah. it's pretty fun. So as of right now, this is this is number one for me right now. Front runner for sure. Yeah, so right. wow. All right, good job, CZ. It's also fully ambi. <laughs> And, oh, and yeah, it's completely ambidextrous, yeah, true. which is also great. Maybe. So, 
All right, now, now there's actually one thing I just want to criticize CZ on. The fact that they also make a 308 model, but they don't bring it here to the United States. Oh. Yet. Yet. <laughs> I feel... <laughs> Chacha. Why not? boy over here that's a uh, empty mag okay all right nice okay okay mm. Ooh. Swiss chocolate, Swiss shard, Swiss car. So the BNT APC223, what do you think? Um, honest opinion, it's a little bouncy up front for me, but could be a muzzle device, yeah. really. Um, other than that, feels good, shoots good, didn't notice any gas or anything. Heat, after we all, this one actually is the coolest one that we've actually shot That's after all that one. course of fire. Um, I've got my little gripes with BNT, other than like the charging handle up here is a little close to the top. Uh, doesn't really do good for me. You have to push your optic way back to get yeah, it out of the way. Yeah, show, show the camera just yeah. where, the, uh, where the charging his charging handle is. Where the charging the handle is, unfortunately, is right there in the way. So this is truly a knuckle buster. But all in all, feels good. Feels yeah, good. and uh, I think this is also the first one that has uh, a, also a bolt release on the right hand side. Right. So it is actually a complete ambidextrous design. Mm -hmm. Does look like we also have an adjustable system, which is nice. And with that, I like the way it shoots. Felt good. Yeah. I mean, you did outrun the trigger once, you know, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> How would you think shooting it, man? I mean, to keep it as simple as possible, I do agree. Everything felt great about it. Um, I do agree with you here with the yeah. charging handle, the placement of that. Um, it was a little bit more bouncy for since uh, our first that we shot, yeah. or our second that we shot that actually felt amazing. But all in all, I thought it was pretty good. Good, is, and this is the uh, factory trigger? Is that right? That is the Elfman. Elfman trigger. Okay, yeah. all right, because that, that trigger right there feels uh, pretty interesting as well. You guys see that? It's just like a little flat triangle type of thing going on there. Controls are really nice to get to. What sometimes you'll notice on uh, ambi safeties, if they're like straight down, they sometimes dig into the knuckle, stuff like that. When I think about like the um, uh, the uh, Scorpion. Yep. Yeah, the Scorpion's got, you know, that that's just terrible. Uh, but the controls are pretty nice and easy enough to use, which are good. Overall, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I have no complaints. It just seems to do what I want it to do. So it's not like I'm all that impressed, but it also didn't do anything that I'm upset about. And yeah, uh, it's getting a little bit warm here, but after three of us just mag dumped, right. you know, uh, three mags through it total, it you know, feels good. Right. I, I mean, what can I say? BNT did a good job. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's move on Next. to uh, what did we, we got that uh, that new Spear LT up in here? Yep. I think that's gonna be the one. <laughs> that Spear buttery goodness. Oh yes. Oh yes. This is a job. Oh, you're turning my turn. I'll take it. Whatever. Yeah, I'll grab it. Mm -hmm. I already like how she feels. Let's see if she takes me to a promised land. Nice. Thank you, sir.
We have so how warm is that right now? It's it's really not. It's all gingerly touching. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, <laughs> it's uh it's cool actually. Like that's I mean for uh, yeah, it's warm obviously, but Definitely now as as the way. heat stays here for a little bit, it might warm up a little bit more. We'll see. But it felt good to shoot. Felt good. The factory muzzle device is fine. I don't mind it as much, but if I compare it like let's say to the CZ Bren 2, I did think that the CZ Bren 2 was a little bit more flat shooting. Yep. Then again, the the factory muzzle device that it comes with is nice. Also, I forgot to mention this, the CZ Bren 2 does have the ambidextrous uh, bolt release just right in here. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but I do like the Sig Spear LT a lot. Uh, you know, I, get, it's, I think it's an impressive little rifle. I think I it's like it. very impressive. The only thing, I do not like this wire mm -hmm. stock back here. It's uh, a little short, yeah. little short. Other than that, they give you everything out of the box, man. Um, QD points, reinforced steel, Adjustable, and, system. And adjustable system and be i mean it's just there and again it having kind of more of like a traditional ar charging handle placement you can't use a standard ar charging handle but that placement is also nice because it's not going to interfere with any optic no. you know so you're all set on that end also yes it is have, it does have an adjustable gas system as well and i actually really really do like the ambidextrous bolt release yeah. on this guy uh, i kind of did that right off right off the bat and it just felt good it also has, you know, everybody loves the uh, Ford Assist, you know, yeah. so it's got that as well. Now, is it your favorite? As much as I want to say it is, I can't say it. I'd have to say the CZ. CZ still CZ, yours. CZ, CZ still with. where it's I at. I love everything about it. Like you said, out the box, you're grabbing everything. Even sitting for a while, it's still not as warm mm -hmm. as I thought it was going to be. Um, controls, where everything is, placement-wise on it, I love that. I love the fact, like you said, um, everything here, it just feels like a solid yeah. firearm here. I have to agree with you on this. Yeah. Having longer arms too, this kind of sucks. See, yeah. see for me, I'm like, hey, you, yeah, this, this might be that's, perfect for you. That's a great length of pull for yeah. me. I can tell you that much, right? And there you guys have it. Folds up nice and compact. And then when you're ready to rock and roll, just pull that out. And for me, I like to have, I like my a shorter length of pull personally, and this feels perfect for me. So I know you guys don't like it, but <laughs> it's, right. yeah, it's, it's okay. I can make it work though. You can make it work. All right, we've got what, one more left? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's go grab that Carmel. Make it happen. Turn the uh, target to face us now. Yeah, to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> what do you want? It's definitely getting warm now. Yeah. yeah. It's honestly, it looks a lot chunkier than what it feels like. Um, yeah, I, I noticed that. It's kind of like one of these things where when I first handled it, I was like, this is a lot for a 5.56. Five, yeah. You know, it reminds me a little bit of that ARX 100, you know, that's just like a tuna gun. Yeah. And uh, then you start to shoot it and you're like, okay, I didn't mind that. I liked the trigger, liked the way that felt. The controls, the ambient controls are okay. I noticed yeah. the dust cover kind of gets in the way of the actual uh, bolt catch. Mm -hmm. Bolt release isn't in a bad placement though, so that's not bad. Mag release on the opposite side feels pretty good as well. Like where the charging handle is. 
Uh, again, adjustable gas system, like that. M-lock rail, nice. But it is kind of, uh, if you're a thumb over bore type of shooter, you know, we, we threw an angle foregrip on, on all of them, an AFG2, yep. uh, with Picatinny. We wanted to make it fair for each, each rifle. And uh, if you're running that, your, your thumb's gonna have to go straight. Yeah. You know, you're, there's, there is no thumb. I mean, you can, but that is, for it's me at least, not it's, not, it's not that comfortable. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts, Aaron? I've got to agree with you that. I just feel like there's a lot going on up there. I mean, even having bigger hands, it's a lot to grab onto there. Um, other than that, it, it, it felt a little bit kind of plastic to me. I don't know a little bit, over. everything's oversized though. You know. So that's, you know, that's a plus. Yeah, yeah I, I guess you could say that is a plus for sure. Um, me honestly I, I like that feel of like the sig that we just shot i like that i'm feeling the metal on my hand and all the above when it comes to that like you said with everything control wise it feels like everything is in place trigger was decent did yeah. the job i mean end of the day it does the job it yeah. Comes down to it, yeah and personally I, I am a huge fan of b5 systems got yep. the b5 grip so i like that quite a bit uh the stock easy enough to figure that out okay cool uh, not a whole lot of resistance there yeah. but at the same time i don't think it'll yeah a little bit Okay, but there you have it. So yeah, uh, adjusting the stock isn't difficult. There's just a little button back here. You know, again, it's like, all right, it's cool, it's fine, but again, it's just a chunky boy and it's yeah. a little bit heavier. Uh, and if you compare it to like the Brin 2, if you compare it even to the ACR and the SCAR, and even the Spear LT, the Spear LT I think is probably one of the more narrow rifles that yeah. we've had that we've yeah. shot today and it just feels good. Yeah. Uh, this. It's okay. It's not my favorite. I don't hate it. I don't dislike it, but it's it's okay. Right. So basically, IWI, make a Galil that's short stroke and we'll all be happy. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, you can leave the Galil the way it is. It's, it's, awesome. it's awesome. I love it. It's just today's video is all about short stroke guns and the Galil just, <laughs> it's a long stroke boy. But with that, let us know what you guys think so far down in the comment section. Let's go ahead and head back to the bench and let's give our final thoughts and let's really get into the nitpickiness of these rifles and let's hurt some feelings now. Yeah. <laughs> so we have shot all of these rifles now with the uh, stocks extended and also folded because we wanted to get a fill for them each way. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll give our final rankings about you know your favorite to least favorite, things like mm -hmm. that, or I should say we'll start with the least favorite work to your number one selection. Uh, but Jason, you said you've already mentioned a couple of things, shooting it with the stock and without yeah. shooting them. What, what, what were your thoughts? Side folded, yeah. folded all together. Um, honestly, the worst offender is going to be the B&T for me. Um, after that is the Carmel. Mm -hmm. You can't really activate that safety lever. Mm -hmm. um, then the CZ is right after that. Um, SCAR, easy to do. Yeah. Um, ACR is right up there. Toss up between easiest to shoot, well yeah. folded, is definitely the LT and the ACR, hands down. Yeah, so without it being side folded, just shooting with the stock, mm -hmm. you know, which one, which one did you find to be the most comfortable and all that type of fun stuff? Comfortable? Yeah. All the way, definitely the Bren. Yeah, the Bren too, yeah. I thought was, was feeling pretty good. Out of, sh after shooting with and without the stock, which, which one did you feel the most comfortable with? So at then? first I went one, two. Yeah. But then once we folded, I went one, two. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with that. So I, I had to switch that up and just like you said, accessibility to everything mm -hmm. and then I like that left folding yeah. stock also. I am also a fan of the left folding stock. One thing I noticed with, uh, which one was it? I With the Carmel, I want to say when we shot this one folded, nope, that one's got plenty of room. I got to remember which one it was now because we did them all back to back. Definitely was it? Brent. Was the Brent for sure? Because shooting it, yeah, yeah your, my, your knuckle is, be, is right there on on it, you know, so that one did it. And I think perhaps maybe even the ACR I noticed. But one thing that's nice about the ACR, of course, is well, where that positioning is of the bolt release right down here is it is completely ambidextrous, which is nice and it was easy to get to. But yeah, also that sits right, mm, right in the way. Fingers too, that's definitely gonna be an issue. Yeah, 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 for sure. Larger hands, fatter fingers, that's Gloves. gonna be an issue. Gloves, yeah. yep, gloves are another one. I found that the scar, again, that probably has a lot to do with the break. Mm -hmm. You know, that was uh, easy enough. Granted, with this knuckle now, not so much this one, right. likes to rest right there also. Mm -hmm. So the ones that, you know, really clear it, 
that did a, a really good job of that obviously are the ones that fold to the left yeah. right which again is going to be the B&T and the Sig Spear and the Sig Spear being a little bit newer I, I think they just really found what they were doing and right. this one the Carmel even though there's a lot of material it's a thick 556 yeah. gun yeah. because of that the stock sits a little bit higher up and I do believe that the grip is a little bit lower and just the way the stock is designed again Oh geez. When we show this, there's actually quite a bit of room here yeah. for, for my hand to actuate the trigger and all that type of fun stuff yeah. and the different controls. So if I was, this one was comfortable enough shooting, you know, with the stock folded. Uh, but I think the true, I, the, the, I guess everything that, you know, this video is all about is, is ranking your uh, least favorite to favorite you I'm go first. Sorry. All right, so I'll go top to bottom then. I'm okay. going one, like we said. Yep. Two. With the B and T. With the B and T. All right. Three. I'll go scar. Mm -hmm. Four, five, and then I got to go six. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. And then that route. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, how about you, Jason? All right. Starting off lowest. Yep. For me, um, gonna be the Carmel. After that, the B and T. Mm -hmm. Then the scar. Then the LT. Yeah. But I will say uh, it's a toss up between number one for me, number two. I'm going to go ACR with number one. Number one. Really? Yeah. 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 So if I'm having to go from least favorite to favorite, I'm going to go ahead and start at the bottom. And the BNT just was the one that just, I just, it just didn't do a whole lot for me. Now keep in mind too that this is a 922R compliant BNT. Uh, we wanted to make sure we're doing this correctly because, you know, we're a legitimate legal business and everything. And so the stock on this guy doesn't uh, act the way it should. And I'll show you that really quick because it's just, it's just, Kind of yeah, that, that's there. that's that's all there is to it you know so i mean again that's not really the gun's fault right yeah. that's actually just stupid gun laws uh but <laughs> <laughs> with that though the bolt release is actually pretty damn stiff yeah uh even with a loaded mag in it i found it to be actually pretty difficult to actuate and i was like ah i like the fact that it has ambient controls but it just wasn't my favorite uh from there yeah the carmel even though it was easy enough to shoot uh with the stock folded it's still just a lot happening for yeah. a 556 gun. Yeah. Just didn't really, really do it for me. Um, from there, I really actually, uh, I'm gonna put the ACR. The ACR, again, it shot great. I loved it. It did everything I wanted it to do. And it, I love the positioning of the charging handle and everything, but ah, I felt like I was definitely feeling a lot less recoil okay. uh, with these two. And this one's really hard for me, whether it's going to be the Scar or the uh, the Bryn, but I think I'm going to go Scar, then Bryn, and then Spear LT for me as my number one. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep. yeah, just because, again, how simple this rifle is. Notice it's probably got the less material happening on than all of these. has the longest rail, the most M-lock spacing. It has the adjustable gas system, as a lot of these do. I think it has probably my favorite bolt release. It's just... That's easy to actuate, yeah. and it's out of the way. And yes, I do love the fixed short length of pull stock. I actually really don't mind it whatsoever. And it has, again, the charging handle out of the way. If you've got a side charging, I enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but the position's gotta be good. Yeah. And uh, that's that's how, I, that's how I feel about that. It is the most modular. So, it, it is, so. you know, and it allows me to do whatever the heck I want to. We can short, we can shorten, lengthen all of this and everything else, you know. I feel like every time we talk about SIG, we talk about modularity. They know what they're doing. I feel like that's one word associated with SIG. Yep, yep. Like now, it. now the next challenge we could probably do is uh, seeing whether or not the rail actually stays on straight. Ooh. So Spice. in this test today, this this that wasn't tested. The moment we start throwing on, let's say maybe some some laser beams, maybe some IR or something like that, uh, does the rail shift? Does it hold zero? Because that's a big deal in a whole different category. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because we've all seen, I mean, how, how warm is the barrel? Notice where the barrel is right now, right? 16 inch rifle, right? Mm -hmm. We see how it's lined up with the Picatinny, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just add a little bit, add a little bit to it. Oh, it's, this one's going back to where, it, where it's supposed to. We're good. I think this one might be, yeah, uh, you had a little movement there. Yeah, you're off. Ah, uh, just a little movement. Yeah, just, 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 there. just a little bit. Now, free-floating rails or something, but the, it's definitely favoring the right side uh, of the rifle, I think, now. And again, it doesn't take much. Oh, I actually felt it that time. Yeah. Now look where I it is. see it. Mm. Okay. So, it's, it's my number one for today's test. But if I... You know, I, I think we should do a video on that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> we should talk a little bit about that. Uh, but yes, SIG is all about the modularity and you know making it you know mission adaptable, right. right? And so that's pretty much today's video, guys. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Whose ranking do you prefer, and what is your rank of the six rifles that we shot today? And is there a buffer tubeless? side folding short stroke piston driven rifle that we should have talked about that we didn't ah oh, the pap the, the pap yeah it's pap it's the pap it's pap short for ak the that, pap that's the that, isn't that long stroke is it long stroke the, like you're talking about like the zastava pap the never mind pap? never mind that's that's <laughs> never mind you are you are all about the glil uh, yeah yeah I'm here for it, man. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm over here like, wait, which short strike path are we talking about? I was like, well, I missed that one from Zastava. All right, anyway, I mean, Zastava. All right, anyway, let us know again down in the comment section, guys. And don't forget to head on over to cfcontest.com because maybe one of these rifles will be featured there. And maybe one of these rifles will be free to you or, you know, to shoot at no cost or something rather. I don't know. Anyway, um, we'll leave it off there. And as always... It's a pleasure to talk with you guys on video. Thank you for your viewership. Thank you for your business. God bless. Always tip the waitress. <laughs> we'll see you next time at Classic Firearms. <laughs>